very warm welcome to all of our attendees this morning. The tips to continually prevent COVID-19. We know you hear this all the time, but it is good reminders for us. Uh, we still have many people getting infected every day and uh, very close to home as well. And so we just want to encourage you to please uh, take consideration and always try and prevent COVID-19 wherever you are. Don't forget to wash your hands regularly or use a alcohol-based hand sanitizer. Please avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth with any unwashed hands. Uh, very important, we'll also look at that today in terms of water diseases for our toolbox talk. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze with a flexed elbow or a tissue, and then throw that into the bin and always clean and disinfect frequently touched objects and surfaces. And this would include the hand tools and power tools that you're using on a daily basis. Now, obviously, uh, OPSA is always trying to ensure that we bring you, uh, the plumbing community, as well as its members, the information that you want to hear during these toolbox talks. And so quite a few emails and WhatsApp messages came through about the different types of water diseases that you might experience when working with sewage uh, and even, again, on Legionnaire's disease. And so we decided, because we've had these toolbox talks before, it is a good reminder for us, uh, but we're just going to go through this information again, because as a plumber, you are constantly working working uh, with water and these diseases are prevalent all the time so let's not take too long and get straight into the biological hazards of working with things like raw sewage now when we are working with sewage we must remember that it's not just the sewage that is inside the waste pipe a lot of times uh, there is even sewage in the actual water and soil around the environment that we are working in. So digging trenches, doing excavations. And while doing this, if there was a possibility uh, of a burst pipe, and this has leaked out into the ground area around the piping, then please note that obviously the three main risks of viruses, bacteria, and parasites may be found in that soil. And so these types of bacteria, fungus, and parasites are viruses that will cause intestinal, lung, and other types of infection. Now, if equipment, work practices, and PPE don't protect you from swallowing these agents, you can get very sick. What do we mean by this? Well, obviously, you are using your personal protective equipment. You have your gloves on when using the spade and the pick or the rock breaker. Uh, and perhaps you use your hand with the glove on uh, to move some soil around the area where that broken pipe or burst pipe, uh, specifically speaking about waste pipes, has happened. But you keep your glove on and then you grab one tool and then another tool. You see, you haven't washed your hands in between that time because uh, it's all part of the actual work. But when do you actually clean your tools? Well, see, if you don't do that, then what is on your glove lands on your tools, uh, lands on all the handles of all the tools. And as you complete your work, you remove your gloves and you pack your tools away. Now you are doing it uh, without gloves. In fact, even if you did it with gloves on and you put this all back into the bucky, uh, you have cross-contamination between your tools, your personal protective equipment, and you're just carrying it along with you in your bucky. And then when you get back to your office where you need to take these tools out and pack them away, well then normally what happens is you don't use your gloves and this is where it now gets onto your actual hands, on your clothes, and you can then spread this around your body by touching your eyes, your nose, or even your mouth. A lot of times, and this is quite staggering, we had these few statistics a couple of toolbox talks ago that uh, one in three people wash their hands when they go to the bathroom. Now, that is when uh, you are doing something uh, that is defecating or whatever it is that you're doing in the bathroom and one in three people that's 30 percent of people basically are actually washing their hands uh, after they are completed but what about when working with biological hazards such as sewage well if we're not doing it after we've used the bathroom are we doing it once we are working in an environment where there is potential viruses bacteria and parasites that are constantly found now when we talk about work practices Human pathogens, so obviously this is from feces, uh, can go into soil and raw sewage can enter the body through, as we mentioned, the nose and the mouth, particularly if a person drinks contaminated water 
or by touching something that is contaminated and then touching your mouth and nose. Now, we've seen the uh, constant reminders of COVID. Do not touch your nose, your eyes, your mouth, or your face even with unwashed hands. And this is because it's very easy for you to be able to pick up COVID-19 or the coronavirus that causes uh, SARS-CoV-2. However, this is not just because of COVID-19. There are so many other diseases and pathogens that have been here. Uh, in fact, coronaviruses as a as an individual type of virus has been here for millions of years. It's been in the normal soil. It's constantly around us. The mutated one uh, that has turned into SARS-CoV-2 uh, has become what we know now as COVID-19. But those viruses and bacteria has always been there. In fact, some of the health effects of exposure to sewage and contaminated soil will include other types of diseases, such as tetanus. And this is caused by a toxin produced in bacteria that is most common in soil and sewage. Then you've also got the parasitic worm that sits inside there, and this causes another type of disease. There is also the possibility of getting hepatitis A, B, or C because of contaminated soil or ground or the human pathogen that is found in soil or raw sewage. Even uh, working with normal water, um, bacteria such as E. coli and parasites such as Guardia is all prevalent in the water system. Now, yes, we try our best. Most companies, in fact, even Johannesburg Water have facilities to try and get this out of the water. But please remember, it is still in the ground around many of the water sources. And so we can do as much as we can, but we always want to ensure that we are protected. And this is by educating ourselves on the type of work that we're doing, where we are doing that work. And if we are not sure, take the necessary precautions by ensuring that your work practices help you to avoid exposure to sewage. And this would include things like wearing the proper personal protective equipment. And this would be gloves, coveralls, rubber boots, eye protection, washing your hands and decontaminating your equipment after use. And when we talk about decontamination, we talk about sanitizing, sterilizing and cleaning your personal protective equipment. As a note, please remember, do not wash or change your clothes at home. You want to change your work clothes before leaving the work site if this is possible, especially when working with raw sewage or waste. And this is because it's going to land on your clothes and you're going to cross-contaminate this into your work buckies and eventually at home. And if you are using your home-based washing machines uh, and you put other clothes in there, there is a possibility for cross-contamination there as well. Yes, it is called a washing machine. And if you put the clothes in there, it should wash and clean it. Uh, yes, this is um, possible with many washing machines, but remember, it is a parasite that lives in water. And so we need to ensure that we have the correct type of washing medium, the types of soap and the type of hot water that will be able to destroy this type of bacteria, virus or disease that is found in water. Now, depending on where you are working, you obviously want to ensure that you have the necessary information to protect your staff. So as safety professionals, as those safety representatives, do you know where you are going to be working in the next coming week? Do you know if there is a possibility that your health will be affected due to these types of bacteria that you find? If so, take action now. Do your risk assessment. See what type of safe working procedure you need to develop and see if you have the adequate resources to protect your employees. Make sure that you do this as a team building effort. Speak to all of your employees. Do it as a team. Remember, the more people you involve in health and safety, the better the outcome of the actual system will be. Now, as we mentioned today, this morning rather, many of you were asking about Legionella again. And because we've discussed this in the past few, uh, last year we discussed it as one whole month, Legionella's month, uh, all these recordings are still available for you. Now, if you want some more information on it, either you can just 
you know, Google the information, uh, try and look for reputable sites such as the Department of Health uh, or even WHO overseas. You want to look for the World Health Organization uh, accredited companies or websites where the information that you're going to get is obviously credible. But what is Legionella or the Legionella bacteria? Well, these bacteria are found naturally in water and soil all over the world, uh, but it is in low numbers. And so it's not seriously dangerous when you're working with a type of soil. But Legionella is pathogenic. In other words, it's a pathogen. It's a gram-negative bacteria. And what this does is it includes certain types of diseases. Uh, one of the diseases is pneumonia type of disease. This is Legionnaire's disease. And then there's a milder type of disease, uh, very similar to flu-like things, which is called Pontiac fever. Now, the Legionella bacteria uh, obviously sits on scale, sediment, algae, rust, sludge, or any type of organic matter. And it starts growing from this. So it feeds off of these things that it sits on. Now, Legionnaire's disease or Pontiac fever, it can only be contracted when you inhale water droplets that contain this type of bacteria. Now, when we say inhale bacteria, what we are talking about is once the actual water source that contains Legionella um, allows it to spread and get to a point that it is actually so large that Legionnaire's disease is a very high possibility. So when it's very low, our immune system can fight this type of bacteria. In fact, it can fight a lot of types of bacteria. But when we are exposed to it more and more, and when we do not protect our bodies from it, it will then start uh, growing and then it will start spreading more and more. And in fact, it will then start spreading as we inhale it or if it is being aspirated. Now, aspiration means it lives in the water, in water droplets. But when it is aspirated, it means that the water source, like a shower, when you open the tap, the shower water that comes out has some of the water that is aspirated. In fact, it's a very small micron size droplet of water. And this is able to be inhaled into your lungs. Now, most water, if it is more than 0.5 of a micron, you will then be able to swallow it. It goes into your stomach and most of the gases in your stomach can pretty much destroy a lot of diseases, including uh, Legionnaire's disease or the bacteria known as Legionella. And this uh, stomach juices or gases will then destroy it and it will no longer be in your body. However, if the water is aspirated, it will then land up in your lungs. <clears throat> now, your lungs uh, rely on white blood cells to be able to protect you. The problem is Legionella uh, creates a little sac around the virus. And this sac encompasses the Legionella bacteria, and it starts growing in there until it becomes strong enough. In fact, it, it grows in there until it's stronger than your white blood cells, and then it starts uh, spreading through the body, through the blood. And this is what uh, you start getting flu-like symptoms. Uh, you start coughing, sneezing, uh, your nose starts running, you'll start feeling lightheaded, feverish. And this has the potential to become Legionella's disease or obviously something more serious, which is a pneumonia-like disease. So this is constantly around us. In fact, it thrives in moist conditions. If we have any water source that is between 20 and 45 degrees Celsius, this is the perfect breeding ground for Legionellosis or the Legionella bacteria. And this disease will then either come out in a normal flu-like symptom or it could become a more dangerous and more severe type of disease uh, like pneumonia. This is potentially fatal. Uh, many people have died from this type of disease, although it is treatable, but many people do not know that they have it. You see, they feel like they just have the flu. And so if we constantly take a look at the environment that we are working in, uh, perhaps even the geysers that we are installing, the water sources that we're installing, if we are ensuring that we are killing off the bacteria in the water sources, it is less likely that we will be exposed to these types of diseases. As we mentioned, it obviously thrives 
in 20 to 45 degrees Celsius water. And so if you are setting any water source temperature, please ensure that you always set it higher than 45 degrees Celsius for at least an hour a day. And that hour process with a higher degree Celsius, we would suggest between 50 and 60 degrees Celsius, that will then kill off this type of bacteria. And these will uh, all be in places such as showers, spas, jacuzzis, uh, water features, any pools or water springs, steam rooms, and then around taps that have little aspirator knobs on them. So what do we want to do? Well, we want to check our temperature. We also want to check the cleanliness of the source of water. We want to keep in mind and remember the growth range of the Legionellosis uh, bacteria between that 20 and 45 degrees Celsius mark. We always want to ensure that we increase the temperature of our geysers for at least five, uh, sorry, for at least one hour every single day in order to destroy this type of bacteria. And then we want to look at the cleanliness of plumbing. Uh, and if you are not a plumber listening in today, when last have you had your plumbing inspected? Well, why not call a qualified, accredited, approved plumber out your premises and have your plumbing checked. You see, we want to see the cleanliness, not just of the water source, but the cleanliness at the end point. Because we cannot look into our plumbing, a plumber will be able to dismantle our plumbing to be able to see exactly what is inside there. If you have any shower heads or any nozzles attached to any taps in your house, uh, please ensure that you disinfect these regularly. Uh, sediment and bacteria can grow very, very quickly. And it doesn't take very long uh, before you've got enough of this to be able to cause an actual problem. Then do your monthly inspections, do quarterly inspections. These can be done internally, but ensure you have annual inspections by someone who is approved, somebody who knows what they are doing. So if it is your current service provider and you do have maintenance done, why not ask them to take a look and see if there is a possibility that you are at risk for Legionella. And if this bacteria is a possibility for your industry or your company that you are living in uh, or working in, sorry, then rather do a full Legionella plan to prevent the growth of this. In fact, that plan will help you to destroy quite a lot of other diseases that are also found in the water. But speak to your plumber, tell them what you need and allow them to come out and give you a proper maintenance plan. And the reason for this is you need to protect not just yourself, but those around you. There is no doubt, and we are going to discuss this at nine o'clock today, also with our webinar, that clean running water is absolutely vital. And a plumber that knows what they are doing will be able to give us the best quality water. In fact, not only are they going to make it hot water in certain cases, but they will make it hot and safe in order to prevent scalding, as well as the possibility of bacteria forming in that water. And we cannot express enough what the benefits are to a healthy workforce. If you have employees that are healthy, well, first of all, you are taking a stand as a company, as an employer, to ensure your well-being of your employees. And this goes a long way in ensuring that you have increased life expectancy amongst your employees. It will reduce the number of people who have to leave early. And when we say early, we're not talking about during the day, we're talking about people who develop diseases over a period of time and are no longer able to work because of chronic diseases. You also have less people leaving a company uh, because of the potential or high potential of getting sick every day. And then also uh, lower social and healthcare costs. And this is overall how we can impact the economy around us. See the less people going to hospitals, the less uh, we are putting a burden on healthcare around us. It also maximizes worker potential and potential growth for the business. So we can see our occupational health and safety regardless in what form it takes the safety management system, which includes health, safety, uh, things like quality management and risk management, and looking specifically after health in terms of the plumbing areas that we are working in, will really help us to benefit not just our employees, not just our company, but also our customers. You see, by protecting them, you will have 
future customers. And that is really a more sustainable business model. Just a very big thank you to all of our attendees and we hope you have a safe week.